The Small HD Focus 5 has been one of the most popular monitors and I've been using it as my go-to for years now. But when I got my hands on the brand new Small HD Cine 5, it absolutely blew everything else out of the water. So let's take a closer look at this beast right now. Now the Focus 5 has been a great monitor, but it's missing some key features that I think a lot of us need. And the Cine 5 answers all those problems. The first one is that it uses micro HDMI for its input and there's no loop out. Whereas on the Cine 5, you get full size HDMI in and HDMI out. So if you need someone else to be able to see what you're filming in real time, you can use a wireless transmitter and loop that footage out from that HDMI out. Not only does it have HDMI, but it also has SDI in and out. So if you're using a cinema camera like the Sony FX6 or a RED camera, you can take advantage of those SDI ports. Another thing is the Focus 5 only has 800 nits brightness. So anytime you're shooting outdoors, you have to use a monitor hood. And even then it can be pretty difficult to see your image, especially if you're in direct sunlight. Whereas on the Cine 5, it gets ultra bright at 2000 nits brightness. So you don't have to use a sun hood. And this is perfect for me because I live in Arizona where the sun is always shining and it makes it really difficult to see your monitor, but not when you're using the Cine 5. Another thing is that the Focus only uses one Sony NPF battery. So if it dies on you in the middle of a shoot, you're gonna go dark until you can swap it out for a new battery. Whereas on the Cine 5, you get to use two Sony NPF batteries, which is incredible because if you see one is dying, you can quickly hot swap it out for another new live battery and you stay up and running. So if you're on a really long shoot and you can't afford to have the monitor go down on you, this is perfect. Now, another new monitor from Small HD that I've been using recently is the Action 5, which is an absolute hardware upgrade from the Focus 5 because it has a 2000 nits brightness monitor. So it's just as bright as the Cine 5, and it also has full size HDMI in and outputs. However, it uses a simplified OS. So if you're looking for something that's pretty basic and simple, the Action 5 is a great option, and I've actually made an entire review of it that you can check out here. All right, so you've seen me compare this monitor to a few others now. I wanna take a closer look at some of the hardware features. Something that really stands out to me is the built-in joystick and back button. So if you wanna navigate the entire monitor without using the touchscreen, you can do all of that here. And some places that I could see that really coming in handy is say you're shooting out in really cold weather and you're wearing gloves and the touchscreen just is not gonna work for you. Well, you're in luck because you can do it all with the hardware. Something else I like is that there's so many ways to mount this monitor. You have quarter 20 threads with area locating pins on both sides of the monitor. You have it on the top and then on the bottom you actually have three quarter 20 threads with area locating pins. It also has a port for continuous DC power in and a locking USB port. So if you use a RED camera, you're gonna be able to control it with this monitor. It also has a headphone jack so you can monitor your audio and a full size SD card port so you can import LUTs. There's also a lock button so if you don't wanna accidentally change any of your settings on the touchscreen, you can turn that on. Something else I love that I can tell small HD designers put a lot of thought into is that everything is recessed. So none of the buttons stick out past the body itself. All the connections on the bottom and the side are slightly recessed, so none of them are accidentally gonna get bumped and broken off, and I just think that's a really smart design. We've talked a ton about the hardware and the build quality of this monitor. Now let's talk a little bit about PageOS 5. PageOS 5 has so many features and customizability to it that I'm not gonna take a deep dive in this video. It could actually be an entire video of its own, so if you're interested in that, leave a comment below. Now the monitor itself is a full HD monitor with 1080p by 1920. So it's really easy to see your image. And of course you can do a normal pinch to zoom, see if things are in focus, check things out. It's really easy to do. One of the best parts about PageOS 5 is that you can create custom pages. It's one of the most standout features of small HD monitors. So you can add whatever tools you want to. And of course, you pretty much have all the tools that you've come to expect from a professional monitor. So let's say you wanted to add you know, whatever aspect ratio you want to be using. And then let's add a couple exposure tools like zebras. Let's throw a few other things on there just quickly so you can see. I'm gonna add your waveforms. And let's add maybe one more. Let's do focus assist. So now I have a custom page all set up with the tools that I use. Obviously you can see they're really taking over the page and that's okay. You can actually change so much once you get here. So it doesn't actually have to be across the whole screen like that. I can make it 
a lot smaller, move where it's at, everything like that. So I'm gonna change the location of this, put it down at the bottom, and then I can even adjust it to be a smaller width. So if I don't want it to be 100% of the screen like that, I can bring it down, let's say 50%. Now let's change the aspect ratio. So you can make this whatever you want it to be. Just tap the little arrow. Right now it's on 239, your common widescreen aspect ratio. But let's say you're shooting something square, one by one or four by five for Facebook. You could do that, or you can go in and put a custom setting in and make it wherever you want. And you can see I can turn zebras on and off right now. It's not showing anything zebraing because nothing's going out of the range, but you can easily change your minimum and maximum IREs here, change the color of the zebras to whatever you want. It's just so much customizability and I absolutely love that. So you can see just how quick and easy it is to set up a custom page. You can of course add as many tools as you need to. There's a whole bunch of other options here. So the nice thing is the Cine 5 actually comes with a few pages already preset up. So you don't even have to make a custom page if you don't want to. You can actually just swipe over with one finger. This is pretty much our exposure page. Then we have a focus assist page. And then we have another exposure page looking at your RGB parade and vector scopes and another one set up with your guidelines and safe guides and everything like that. And you can actually use two fingers to pinch and go out. You can see what they've named it. We've got framing, scopes, focusing, exposure, and then you just have clean output and your own custom pages. So it's all really easy to get to. Now, if you want to go in and change any of your settings from this menu, you can of course just tap into settings and there are so many different things here that you can adjust. Let's go back to our dashboard. And this is where you can see a few simple things like what is actually coming into the monitor right now. So I can see my input resolution is just HD, 1080p, 24 frames per second, 8 bit. All that information is given to me so I actually know what I'm getting from the camera here. And then if I had an SDI input coming in, I can also see that here. Now, something I love that's really unique to the Cine 5 is that you have these custom buttons here on the side, and those just pop up when you tap the screen once. So it doesn't matter which page you're on, you can tap the screen and quickly get to some of your settings. One of the ones that's built in right away is your ability to change the brightness of the backlight. And I love that because you know how it is when you're running and gunning, let's say you run outside, you need 100% brightness out in the daylight to see this. And then you go back into the studio and you can just go down to zero or 20% brightness. So that makes it so quick to change your brightness without diving into all the settings really deep. Now, let's say you wanna to get to the settings, you can do that quickly here. Or if you don't want that quick hot link button to say your settings and you wanna put something else here, you can just hold down for a few seconds on it and boom, you can actually change whatever it is. So let's say you want something on every page like your zebras. Well, you can just tap that on and it's done. Just hit back and now the zebras is one of your quick links to get to very quickly. So for me, these quick link buttons are amazing. Pretty much all the tools you could possibly want are built into this monitor. Of course, you have anamorphic de-squeeze, LUT control, everything that you could possibly need in a professional monitor is built into this. So if you want a really in-depth dive into PageOS 5, let me know and I can go much deeper into all the settings available to you. Now, I do wanna quickly show you how you can add as many custom pages as you want. So just hit this little plus sign and you can do one of the ones that they already have pre-set up or you can simply add a blank one. And then, like I was showing you earlier, go in and add as many of the tools as you need. And of course, you can add a bunch of these custom pages. Just make as many as you want. And if you decide that you don't want one anymore, you can simply tap this little arrow down here and delete it. And it's also cool because you can name them. So let's say there's different workflows that you have. You can simply go in and rename it. I really love PageOS 5 and I stand by that it is the best operating system on a camera monitor that I've ever used. It's much more in-depth and built out than Atom OS. Now let's talk about the price of the Cine 5 monitor. And at the time of filming, it's about $1,600 US, which is definitely not cheap. And that's why I'd consider this one of the top of the line monitors for professional filmmakers that has all the software and hardware tools built into it that you could possibly need. But if that's out of your price range, we've already talked about a few other options like the Focus 5, which when it was brand new was $500, but it's lacking a lot of the hardware features you get with the Cine 5. Or you have the Action 5 that's only $330. Now it does have a lot of great hardware features, 
but where it's lacking is its operating system. It doesn't have PageOS 5 and all the amazing tools that you can get with that. So if you're interested in picking up one of these monitors, definitely check out the links in the description below. I wanna say a special thanks to the folks over at Small HD for sending this monitor out for review. They didn't pay me to say any of this or see this video before posting. All right, guys, if you wanna see more videos like this, hit subscribe right now and I'll see you in the next video.